And welcome back everyone, it's Keith once again, and today we're going to be taking a brief look at the performance of Rage 2 on the PC in terms of core scaling, graphical preset scaling, and, well, resolutions with graphics cards. One different resolutions and how those graphics cards perform at those resolutions. And the really cool thing here is Rage 2 is actually running on the Avalanche Studios Apex engine, but the big change here is it is running on Vulcan so that's pretty cool interesting to see newer games coming out with Vulcan and very welcome but let's see how things perform in this game and we're gonna start things off by taking a quick look at the test bench setup the test bench that we're using here is our Z370 based Core i9 9900K running at 5 gigahertz across all 8 cores and 16 threads and 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 on the EVGA Z370 classified K motherboard so with that out of the way, we take our first look at preset scaling. This is done at 4K. We run the preset, so low, medium, high, and ultra. And in this particular game, we did have to go in and change the resolution scaling because it does have a variable or dynamic resolution scaling in the preset. So we set that to off so that it is running a static resolution while all the other settings are left to where their defaults leave them. As far as the preset scaling we see here, that ultra to high doesn't yield a whole lot of difference. Um, it does benefit on the 0.1% lows, but once you go down to medium, you get a pretty substantial bump in performance. And then low, while it gives you a pretty good bump in performance, it also has a very obvious visual downgrade in the sense that pop-ins happen quite frequently and are very, very noticeable, even at short draw distances. So I would avoid that one at all costs, no lower than medium if I were you. Moving things over into the core scaling department, uh, this is an interesting one to see with newer games, especially with lower level APIs, to see how well it benefits or does it even benefit from multiple cores, or well, not necessarily multiple cores, but a an abundance of cores and threads. And this is a title that once you hit four cores and eight threads, the return is well, it's it's arguable. It's pretty much within margin of error past that point. But going from four cores to four threads, you see a decent boost, at least with an RTX 2080 Ti, which we used here. And we did set the CPU at 3.5 gigahertz across all cores so that the clock speed couldn't overpower or you know compensate for the lack of cores and threads at the lower count. Dual cores are pretty much worthless here, and quite frankly, I'm okay with that. Moving things into the graphical results, we see 1080p, and well, we see here that as long as you're rocking a modern mid-range graphics card, you're not going to have a whole lot of trouble getting past the 60 FPS barrier. Uh, we do see the 1066 gig and the 3 gig fall below this line, but I'm pretty sure you can easily tweak some settings and get those performing a little bit better. So if you're running 1080p with this game, you're not going to have a whole lot of trouble here, even uh, well down to the 570. It's doing a really good job there. But when you bump things up to 1440p, you see the strain gets put on these cards pretty hard dropping quite a bit below the 60 FPS mark unless you're running at least a Vega 56. It's it, Well, that's where you breach the 60 FPS average mark, and even the 2060 falls just below that 60 FPS mark. Moving things up to 4K results in a much more drastic hit where, well, if uh, 30 FPS is what you're looking for, well, Vega 56 is going to be kind of your low end on that one unless you're willing to concede on the graphical settings and you see here the RTX 2080 Ti can't even break 60 FPS at this game running at full bore 4k but we saw earlier in the settings that you could drop those settings down to medium and you could break that mark but if you're running anything lower than that and you're trying to do 4k you're definitely going to be limited to uh, low presets and using the resolution scaling to get you over that 60 FPS mark now overall, we found that the performance was okay as long as you were running at a lower resolution and the game actually does a pretty good job compensating for that in the motion blur department and the resolution scaling, it's it's functional, it does okay, but I would quite frankly just tell you to use the scaling slider and do it yourself manually rather than letting the game do it because it kind of doesn't really do a very good job keeping up with you. But overall, the game runs fairly smooth. It's going to be pretty light on your CPU, so you don't have to worry about that department. However, your GPU looks like it's going to be pounded pretty hard. And if you're running the older Pascal generation, well, you can definitely see in the results that the 
Turing cards are definitely more favorable to these type of graphics engines. So, love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Are you even interested in this game? Are you playing it? Are you having fun? Or is this a hard pass for you? Either way, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Let us know, and we'll catch you in the next video.